Hello and welcome to Emmanuel Church Rio Rico's online virtual worship for June 26, 2022. Let's pray. Lord Jesus Christ, we come before you anxious for your present, anxious for your love, anxious to know you better and to love you more. Lord, we bring to you those that are heavy on our hearts, those that are suffering, those that are ill, those who are afraid, those who are worried. And Lord, we trust you for your love, for only you can help us. Lord, for those suffering from severe weather, we ask your mercies. For those who are recovering from illness, Lord, we ask your mercy and grace and healness. And Lord, we pray that you would help us to be bearers of your love wherever we go, whatever we do. Speak to us, Lord Jesus, in your name we pray. Amen. Well, we're continuing our study of Paul's letter to the church in Ephesus that I'm calling In Christ because, well, he talks about that pretty much all the time here and seems the most appropriate name for that. I'm calling today's message Life in the Body because what Paul is really doing here is describing to us how we should live as members of the body of Christ. So let's take a look at it. First of all, he says we are to speak truthfully for we are one body. In verse 25 of chapter 4 he says, Therefore each of you must put off falsehood and speak truthfully to your neighbor, for we are all members of one body. Ephesians 4.25 now, I've seen this before, I've read this before, I, I knew what this said, but I don't know that it dawned on me until I was studying for this, getting ready for this message, that Paul says that the reason we must speak truthfully, the reason we must put off falsehood in dealing with one another, is that we are all members of one body, and that body is the body of Christ. I want you to think about pain for just a minute. None of us like pain. None of us enjoy pain. None of us want pain, at least not if we are normal people. But pain plays a very important role in our body. If you injure your foot and you try to walk on that foot while it's injured, it's going to hurt. And you're going to be inclined to not walk on that foot. If you break a rib, uh, I've never done it, but I understand this particularly painful kind of injury, and you do something that stresses that rib, that hurts that rib more than it's already damaged, it hurts, and it can hurt a lot. And the idea is to keep you from doing more damage to the rib. You see, what it is, is you are not meant to walk on injured parts of your body. You're meant to give them special preference. You're meant to avoid damaging yourself even more. And that's what pain does. But if you take something to mask that pain, say there was some sort of pill that could mask any kind of pain, so you had no feeling whatsoever once you took that pill, you could try to walk on a broken leg you could try to lift heavy things with uh, torn tendons in your arm or even a broken arm. And all you'd really end up doing is hurting yourself even more. Because that pain is a form of truth. And that truth is that you are injured and you need to be careful. You need to watch that part of your body that's injured. But you see, if you lie by imagining that there is no pain, then you can only hurt yourself worse. We must be truthful with one another in the body of Christ because to fail to be truthful is to cause great damage. And more and more damage within the body, the less truthful we are with one another. We might think that we're trying to spare somebody pain by making a little white lie, by not telling the truth. We're not. The only way we can speak to one another in the body of Christ 
is truthfully, honestly, and we must put off all falsehoods because we are all members, all connected members of one body. And what one of us does affects all the rest of us. Next, we must refuse anger and greed. Starting in verse 26 of chapter 4, we read, In your anger do not sin. Do not let the sun go down while you are still angry, and do not give the devil a foothold. Anyone who has been stealing must steal no longer, but must work doing something useful with their own hands, that they may have something to share with those in need. These are two different um, actions and reactions that we sometimes have. The action of anger, of wrath, and the action of greed. Now, stealing, by the way, does not have to be just physical stealing. Stealing someone's goods, stealing someone's um, money. It could be stealing someone's attitude. It could be stealing someone's idea. It could be stealing someone's happiness. We can't steal any of those things. And I, I want to talk about this very first part, though. When your anger do not sin, do not let the sun go down while you are still angry. For many years, I took that to mean do not let the sun go down while someone else is still angry at you. And you know what? We don't have any control over that. We have a lot more control over our own attitude. When we are angry with someone, most often the reason is we feel that they have hurt us. Maybe we feel they have betrayed us. Maybe we feel that they have not done what they ought to do towards us. Maybe we're afraid of them. All of these things, feeling hurt, feeling afraid, can turn easily to anger. Because you see, when we feel angry, we feel stronger. But you see, anger is not strength. Anger is wit weakness. And by holding on to anger, by cherishing that anger, we give the devil a foothold in our lives. Oh, we think we're strong. We think, ah, I'll hold on to this anger and I'll use it against the person that hurt me. But you see, it doesn't work that way. Anger, when we hold on to it, never turns into strength. It never produces something good. And Paul says, don't even let the sun set on your anger. Get rid of it. It will not help you. It cannot help you. It can only harm you and can only turn into something much worse, something really devastating in your life in the long run. And we have to get rid of it. And, and he links this with stealing. He says, anybody who's been stealing must stop stealing. You must work. You must do something useful with your own hands that you may have something to share with those in need. There are many ways in which we can legally steal from other people. We can steal their work and make like it's our work. And that causes loss to them. But Paul says ultimately it causes loss to you. We must steal no longer. We must do our own work. We can't rely on somebody else's work to pull us through. And far too often we do. And that also means in doing good. Sometimes we steal others' good work. Oh, I don't mean we take credit for it. I mean that we let others do good that we should be doing. We are stealing their good work. Paul says you can't do that. Paul says we need to do our own good works. We need to do what is productive for ourselves. And Paul says the reason of this is so that we have something to share with those in need. 
You see, the reason for working is not to get ahead. It's not to do better for ourselves. It is to have something there to share with others who need it. A very different attitude than the world's attitude that'll tell you, you need to build your own wealth up to take care of yourself. But that's not what the Bible says. It says you need to work with your own hands so that you can have something to share with those who are in need. Finally, Paul talks about how we must live. He says, do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouths, but only what is helpful for building others up according to their needs that it may benefit those who listen. I just want to stop here. I, I live a different kind of life than most people do. My two main jobs are working in an elementary school with little children and being a minister. As a result of those two main jobs, those two main things I've spent most of my life doing, I might add, I, uh, I don't curse. It is not something that I can do as an elementary school teacher, and it's not something that I should do as a minister and as a consequence of that, I, I really have a pat, hatter, I'm sorry, pattern, a habit of not cursing. I am not saying that to tell you how wonderful I am. I'm simply saying it's not a normal part of my life. But I want to tell you something. Using curse words, as some people sometimes do, is not in and of itself a sinful thing to do. Now, that may sound like I'm contradicting what Paul said, but, but let me explain. Many curse words are simply scatological terms. Terms for, um, let's just say, bodily functions or body parts. Many curse words are relational terms talking about people's relationships with other people. Sometimes some words used as curse words are actually words that refer to our uh, theological state, um, lack of relationship with God. And you see, all these words can actually be used in ways that are not meant to be damaging. On the other hand, you can speak to someone and only use words that would be considered G-rated and tear them apart. You can devastate them and never use what we might think of as a dirty word. What we say and how we say it determines whether it is wholesome or unwholesome talk. How we speak to other people is vitally important. And Paul says, don't use any unwholesome talk. Don't say anything that is going to damage or hurt or degrade anybody else. Only say what is helpful for building others up according to their needs, according to their needs that it may benefit those who listen. And that's a tough thing to do and might mean that we need to change the way we speak and the way we live. He then goes on to say, and do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God with whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. And he talks then about how you can grieve the Holy Spirit, how you can cause pain and sorrow to the Holy Spirit, who in fact is our guarantee of our salvation. He says, get rid of all bitterness, rage, and anger. By the way, this is sort of a reverse way in which we encounter anger. We start with anger, it turns to rage, and eventually it's, it sours into bitterness. Get rid of all of these. Get rid of brawling, fighting with one another, and slander, speaking badly of other people, along with every form of malice. Um, I, I'm from the South, which of course you realize if you've listened to me for more than a minute or so. And in the South, 
there is uh, a way that people sometimes talk about other people in which they are speaking in a way that sounds like they're trying to be loving and kind when in fact what they're doing is gossiping and tearing down somebody else. And people can say almost anything if it's prefaced or ended by saying, bless their heart. When you talk about somebody, say, bless their heart, they're so ugly. Bless their heart, they are so dumb. Bless their heart, they couldn't do a good thing if they tried. It is not really asking for a blessing of them. It really is just an excuse to talk badly of them. And we can't do that. Paul tells us what to get rid of, and then he tells us what to replace it with. He says, be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other just as in Christ God forgave you. Oh my goodness, he couldn't have picked things that were much harder to say to us. To not just be kind, which is an action, but to be compassionate, to care about one another. And then, even further, forgive each other in the same way, just as in Christ. There's that in Christ again. God forgave you. You see, we need to live like Christ lives. We need to forgive like Christ lives, forgives. We need to care like Christ cares. We need to be merciful and kind and good. Not the way the best people around us do, but as Christ has done. He is our true example. And he is the one that teaches us how we must live and how we must act. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, help us to be like you in all ways. Bless us, guide us, and make us like you in your name we pray. Amen. God bless you and go in peace.